Atoka na tarangi e tū nei whakatika tika te tua rānu i opaia kurua tipua kurua tahito. Ka tokona e tāne ko toko maunga rangi hiki tia rangi hapaenga e tū ko te rangi e tū nei me te papa e tako to nei. Tū mau mai te rā e tū nei i a tama i waho i a tamo ko tahi i te putanga a tama i te rangi tā more more nui i te putanga a tama i te rangi tū hā 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 heke i hui a rangi nui e tū nei. Fiti fiti nuku, fiti fiti rangi, fiti fiti papa, fiti fiti tau, tū mai te mahura nui, tū mau mai te rā. Atea, e rongo whakaere ake e nei ki te kōrero e nei ki te wānanga, ki te tuanu i o rangi nui e tu i honei, turu turu ofiti whakamaua ki a tīna, haumi e, hui e, tae ki e. Kia ora everyone and welcome to the SDG Summit. The Aotearoa New Zealand Sustainable Development Goals Summit were inspired by people wanting to collaborate across sectors to drive meaningful change for the SDGs. Building on two previous in-person SDG summits uh, here in Aotearoa, New Zealand, the 2020-2021 online event series has taken participants on a journey of, from an individual understanding of sustainable development goals to collective action. The need for urgency uh, and collective action to progress sustainable development has been recognised in the summit series themes that we've had uh, to date so far. And so for those of you that are new uh, to the summit today in particular, uh, we've already had three online hui. Uh, and uh, for those of you that have been with us, I feel like I've built it up a little bit. We were supposed to have this hui uh, in person, but uh, due to uh, uh, COVID uh, resurfacing, uh, we've had to adapt a little bit and uh, jump online. Uh, and so in our first hui uh, online last year, we talked about uh, seeing the change, recognising what that change is. Uh, at our second hui uh, in March, at the beginning of this year, we talked about being the change. And our final online hui that we had was working together for change, looking at how we can be more collaborative in our practice uh, to bring the SDGs to fruition. And now uh, the culmination of those three events, uh, like I mentioned, was supposed to be the in-person uh, hui. But unfortunately, uh, we've found ourselves on another uh, Zoom meeting. And so uh, in terms of uh, uh, the SDGs, we're guided by the Agenda 2030 uh, and the central transformative promise to leave no one behind. So we'll be celebrating uh, and creating more inclusive opportunities to collaborate for systematic change as we pivot to bring you the SDG uh, 2021 Summit here online. Uh, and want to acknowledge our uh, hosts, uh, Te Whare Wānaka Waitaha, the University of Canterbury, Te Whare Wānaka Wauraki, Lincoln University, uh, and our supporters, Ara Institute of Canterbury and Christchurch City Council, uh, as well as our uh, changemaker partner, uh, New Zealand Tourism, cultivator partner, Christchurch NZ, energizer partner, uh, New Zealand National Commission for UNESCO, uh, Catalyst Partners, Te Pōkai Tara, Te Tāhuhu o Te Mātauranga, Ministry of Education, Seeds Our Partners, uh, Seeds Podcast, and uh, the UC Centre for Entrepreneurship. Uh, and so as we get uh, today underway, it gives me uh, very much of an honour, actually, to introduce uh, our opening address, which will be given by the Honourable uh, Minister Nanaia Mahuta. Uh, 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 thank you for the for the opportunity to join you today to the University of Canterbury and Lincoln University for hosting this year's Aotearoa SDG Summit. And for the opportunity to join uh, in the conversation, collaboration for systemic change. As we face yet another year of unprecedented challenges, it seems fitting that this conference has the theme of collaboration. The events of the past 18 months have taught us that collaboration at a local, national and international level is essential to protecting our health, delivering economic well-being and protecting 
our climate and environment for generations to come. We've become accustomed to using online platforms out of necessity for meetings and hui such as this. So we must carry on. Aotearoa New Zealand has reached a point where we can further enhance our approach to foreign policy in a way that is independent, values-based, and cognizant of Te Tiritu or Waitangi, the Treaty of Waitangi as our founding document. Our stance on universal human rights, climate change and sustainability, reversing the harmful intergenerational effects of ch child poverty and progressing opportunities for Māori strengthen the proposition that we can achieve the objectives expressed across the SDGs. As we are aware, each member of the UN has undertaken a non-binding commitment to the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, which includes 17 sustainable development goals. When I consider the role that Aotearoa New Zealand can take both at home, amongst the international community and in our approach, we have much to offer. But we're new to this journey and COVID-19 acts as a significant disruptor to an accelerated approach. Since taking office in 2017, the government has implemented a range of core changes that has a greater congruence with the broader objectives of the SDGs. These changes include the formation of the Public Sector Act 2020, the adoption of the Living Standards Framework and implementation of a wellbeing uh, lens to the budget process a range of public policy objectives, reforms in the areas of fresh water and climate change, and undertaking to ensure that wellbeing extends to local government responsibilities. These are some areas the government is able to strengthen in its alignment with the SDGs. However, the recent OAG report on the government's preparedness to implement the Sustainable Development Goals makes clear that more can be done to ensure that there is a strategic integration, leadership and coherent implementation across government. In addition to this, I believe that our unique approach to foreign policy is disposed to accommodate Māori values and have characterised who we are as a people. Values such as manaakitanga, kindness or the reciprocity of goodwill, tanga, our connectedness to each other, our shared sense of humanity. Kaitiakitanga, stewards of our intergenerational environmental well-being, and mahitahi or kotahitanga, collective benefit and shared aspiration. The set of values recognises that everything is connected and needs to be purposeful. So this is why it's a, a, a great alignment to the SDGs. The world we live in at the moment is full of complex challenges including conflict, inequality and poverty that have been exasperated by a global pandemic. At the same time, we face the urgent and unprecedented impacts of climate and environmental crisis, and we are experiencing increased and fast evolving global security risks, such as transnational crime, cyber threats and artificial intelligence. Never before, has our resilience globally as a country and individually been more important? The SDGs provide a framework for creating resilient societies. They are an, an urgent call to end global poverty, reduce inequality, improve health and education, the role of women and girls in our society, spur economic growth, tackle climate change and work to preserve oceans and forests. They guide us on what we need to do to deliver systemic change. We also need a commitment towards empathy, sustainability, and intergenerational solutions for well-being. These are how we must go about our work, both domestically and globally. Both within New Zealand and globally, we need to refresh our joint commitment to these goals. I say refresh because if a pandemic has changed the context for how we implement the SDGs, we should use it as an opportunity to accelerate into this space. The SDGs are a transformational agenda. Across the full span of our government's work, we're looking for opportunities for systemic level change that can underpin and sustain this transformation. Among the tools we're using are alignment 
of aligning our systems to value all aspects of well-being, as said before. Our living standards framework, well-being budget and indicators Aotearoa all ensure that we prioritise, pursue, track and report on social, cultural, economic and environmental well-being. Acting for the long term, we are establishing institutions that have broad support and provide long-term certainty, for example, mandatory setting of targets and reporting of child poverty and an independent climate change commission. These are practical demonstrations of our commitment to kaitiakitanga. Building strong partnerships to drive change. I acknowledge the critical contribution that communities, business, iwi, civil society and other groups make to New Zealand's full implementation of the SDGs. This conference highlights the important mahi that you are all involved in. The SDGs have currency and can, can inform the way we support the region and our global outlook. Regionally, we are firmly connected culturally, linguistically and geographically in the Pacific. Our whanaungatanga to Polynesia extends to the significant Pacific diaspora communities who now call Aotearoa home. Our strength and success as a region relies on kotahitanga and mahitahi, our common objectives and commitment to working together. As we support the region to achieve the SDGs, we must operate within our Pacific context. And this means the SDGs will inform how we work with Pacific partners in the region. This will also support the most pressing, pressing issue for them, climate change, and the issues that matter most for the Pacific region. In conjunction with our common commitment to the SDGs, we will support each island nation's ambition to chart their own recovery and development pathway. We will continue to provide international development cooperation in a way that supports Pacific priorities and will work to strengthen multilateral architecture across the Pacific. Our approach to partnering with the Pacific to meet their resilience challenges will, I believe, signal a new respect for the inherent mana of each Pacific nation and their cultural context. Working with and alongside the Pacific to reach their intergenerational goals is something that we are committed to. This brings me to the global outlook and the critical need to work towards SDG 17 by strengthening partnerships for the goals. We require system level change to confront the global challenges that we face. And without effective global institutions and multilateralism, we will not achieve durable solutions to these global challenges. As we work to uphold critical elements of the international rules-based system like the UN Charter, international trade law, and international instruments such as the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea, UNCLOS, we assert a common set of tikanga or norms that should prevail in the region. These tikanga underpin the peace, security, and prosperity we seek alongside our kaitiakitanga aspirations for New Zealand and the Pacific. A well-functioning multilateral system should seek out common values to find practical, credible solutions that strengthen our global systems. I sense that COVID-19, its impacts and geostrategic competition will urge new conversations on this front. And I certainly welcome the opportunity to refine those values and characterize who we are. Finally, the government has more work to do to better implement the SDGs in a strategic and coordinated manner. I want to acknowledge the Office of the Auditor General who tabled their report just a few days ago. The report made seven key recommendations that will support the government in considering critical next steps to elevate our focus on domestic measures to coordinate the implementation and reporting on the SDGs. I know the theme that there is a presentation from the office to follow and I will leave the outline of those recommendations to them. However, in the current climate, I thought I would leave an open-ended set of questions for panelists and participants to consider. I acknowledge that there is a critical role that government must play to ensure the sustainable de development goals are embedded in an approach that is ostensibly uh, supports, that ostensibly supports the critical outcomes to build a more equitable,
decent, sustainable and prosperous society. Alongside that commitment, there is a role for civil society to play to ensure that there is an enduring social and democratic license to meet those objectives. There is also a role for the private sector and iwi Māori, and I hope that this conversation that you're having today will help to expand what that could be. I also believe that there is a role for parliaments to ensure that there is a long-term commitment to the impl implementation of the SDGs. I hope that your discussions about collaboration will aid further consideration of how we as a country can meet our 2030 SDG objectives. Nō reira, kei ngā iti, kei ngā rahi. Thank you for this opportunity to participate and I just want to leave you with a saying from my tūpuna, ki te kotahi te kākaho ka whati, ki te kāpuia e kore e whati. When a reed stands alone, it can be easily broken, but bound together, it is unshakable, unwavering, and cannot be deterred. Nō reira, tēnā koutou katoa. Uh, tēnā koe te minuta, uh, nei anō ngā mihi e rere kawati nei ki a koe o tira, uh, ki, ngā, uh, ki o tipuna, ki ngā mana, uh, uh, kei runga i a koe, o tira nei mātou te hui i rei uh, e whakamānu atu nei. Uh, kia ora tato, we've got uh, a moment for one or two quick questions. So I should have mentioned this earlier, but uh, please use the chat function. Uh, if you've got a question for our minister, uh, chuck it in there, and uh, you've got about a 10 second window. Oh, we've got one. When you mention uh, fast evolving security risks, I noted you didn't mention the Indo-Pacific region, uh, region. Is there a reason for this? I think it's a global challenge that we have. And while there are certainly uh, specific considerations for the, uh, the Indo-Pacific region, it's not an exclusive uh, security risk uh, to our region. Thanks for the question. Okay, right. One more. Sorry, I'm just going to move the laptop so I can quickly see on the other on the other. Uh, this one coming in from Jacinta, uh, Minister. What SDGs speak most to you? From a personal perspective, women and children. The SDGs that relate to uh, women and children and oceans. Um, but I am mindful that I'm in a role where uh, strategic leadership is going to be important, so that we get greater collaboration across government agencies. Uh, when I think about our domestic implementation of a, uh, the joint venture around sexual and domestic violence, um, we have to find ways where that particular uh, set of work program priorities um, arc in and link more relevantly to the way in which we report against our domestic implementation of the SDGs. Also in terms of oceans policy, sustainable fisheries, both domestic and what we're doing across the Pacific, I think that we can um, perhaps again arc in and uh, make uh, very relevant our role and contribution to supporting in the Pacific context uh, what they're doing around sustainable fisheries. Kapoi. Tēnā koe te minuta. Uh, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule uh, to be with us here uh, today. Nō reira, uh, tēnei te mihi kia koe.